Hello everyone, it is I, Reverso, bringing you the very first recap of War Damu for Knights of Dragons. I uh, want to tell you guys quickly that the war that's going on right now is just crazy. Uh, the reason why it's crazy is probably because there was a gem sale ongoing earlier. It was 30% off on every single gem package that was significant. And uh, the Rainbow's Bounty is a part of that. So a lot of people got gems relatively, well, I suppose you can say cheap. Um, for the price it's usually worth. So uh, we're going to take a look at the guild war. Going to see how well we did. We're, we're also going to see what kind of fireworks uh, fireworks exploded in the top 10. Uh, so first of all let's just take a look at our battle history. Uh, we as Incognito uh, won 8 battles and we lost 1 battle. And we totaled up 201,000 points. So uh, let's actually look at the first battle. 51,000 points. That battle actually was just nuts like almost everyone was online a couple of our members actually did end up jamming and we managed to get 51,000 points during one battle I mean when I think when I take a look at this battle and like a battle when we just started up incognito I think we needed like I don't know like seven or six battles in order to get this amount of points so this is just like seriously mind-blowing uh, then we have the third battle, basically the same story in between those other battles, we didn't really jam. Um, and then you can see a huge drop between uh, the Flaming Red and the House of Darkness. The reason why we have these kinds of drops is because the majority of the people in Incognito are from the USA time zone. That means that during European waking up times and everything where it's like... The, the part where I'm living in when it's like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. It's like they are asleep. Uh, and then like around, I'd say like 5 p.m. my time. Most people from America get online and everything and start like participating a little bit more. So the, the war against Polska, I think that was around, I'm not even sure. I think it was around 1 p.m. my time. And then you guys can see that gradually people start waking up and the points are increasing again. So it's pretty interesting to see for us how this is going to develop in, in, in the upcoming day. Right now it's 9 p.m. So that means it's like uh, 12 to 3 p.m. for American time zone. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, nice, nice little uh, fact about our guild really just to give you guys a heads up. So 201,000 points actually got us up to rank 234. We're, we're still within the top 250. This is actually I think the first time that we are within the top 250 after the first day day one recap. Usually we end up getting within the top 10 uh, throughout the entire war because we all we are like a we're like a locomotive where we are starting very slow and then suddenly we gain momentum and then we're at full speed and we just jump full speed ahead within the two top 250 I don't know maybe sounds a little bit strange but it's the way it always goes for us so maybe we're even gonna get like a higher position than to, uh, top 250 we might even be able to get uh, within the top 200 that would be actually pretty cool to see as a matter of fact in the beginning of the war we were actually maintaining a top 100 spot for the first I think five to six hours in our battle so that was a little bit crazy of people spamming me over line like wow you guys are doing really great and what's happened and everything but this is the reason why guys so right now we're gonna take a look at the top 10 because the top 10 is very very interesting so when taking a look at the top 10 right now you see that the death knights are currently in first place I'm gonna show you a screenshot right now where the death knights were in second place because during the majority of day one they were actually on the second place and danger was in first place and they took over a few hours ago so right now there's a pretty big gap between the death knights and danger because i think that the death knights are really trying to secure that first spot but i think it's really nice that danger is pushing the death knights in order to really uh, work for that first place so that's pretty cool to see uh, more on that later during the next day and the result match or the result match, I mean the result episode. In third place we have only the best with 8.7 million points, followed by Goodervelas. And Goodervelas is returning from the uh, Fusion Boost War. That happened before we saw them within the top 10 place as well. I didn't expect them to see top 10 either in, um, in the uh, epic war that's ongoing right now. So good for them and it's really awesome to see them 
very, very high ranked at the same time. After that, we have Knights of Ferians, and this is a new guild as well in the Epic War within the top 5, and even the top 10. Um, with Knights of Ferians always being within the top 25, I didn't really expect them to ever get within the top 10. Uh, but they managed to prove me wrong, so I'm very happy to see you guys up there, and welcome to the top 10. I'm, I mean, who am I to welcome you guys to the top 10? I'm like top 250. Okay, anyway, moving on to the next one. We have the Night Raiders. Nothing to be uh, unexpected, because they are always within the top 10 anyway, when it comes down to an epic war, so good for them. 7th place, we have the Bros. Brothers of Steel always a uh, contender within the top 10 at the same time. And then in 8th place, we have Epic Knight. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, Epic Knight-ish. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to think about the Epic Knight. Because Epic Knight is sometimes within the top 10. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're not even to be found within the top 25. So I think they actually take phases or like turns like every other war. They decide to throw in some jams in order to aim for the top positions. You know? I cannot really judge for them, but I think that's what they're doing. Like, if anyone from Epic Knight gets offended by that, I'm extremely sorry. This is this is just my thoughts and opinions speaking here, so excuse me for that. Uh, ninth place, we have Bomb Beyond Time. Really low for their doing. They're usually within the top five. I mean, yeah, but with this amount of points being spent, I mean, 13 million from the Death Knights. That's just crazy. I mean, this is to be expected. And if Bomb Beyond Time does the same amount of points as usual, they might end up losing the top 10 position. So coming in third, uh, in 10th place we have Majestic Alliance and that's pretty nice because, uh, well actually I don't even know if Majestic, uh, Majestic Legion I think and Majestic Alliance are one guild altogether. I believe they are, but they're doing very well right here, right now with just hogging the 10th position. But I'm much more curious to see what's after that because that's where the competition is really starting to heat up. In 11th place we have Forsaken, only 400,000 points behind Majestic. And the reason why I'm saying only is because for these type of guilds it really is only 400,000 points. So, gonna be pretty interesting to see what's going to happen there. 12th place we have Team France and Sacre Bleu, War the Amour in your 12th place. Like, if you're really like French and everything, then I'm rooting for you guys, but I want to see you guys in the top 10. Like, literally, it's War d'Amour, so you guys should be in the top 10, right? Like, it's a French team, why not make them top 10? I don't even know, but you guys gotta really work for it. Competition is very, very fierce right now. Let's take a look at rank 13. Whoa! There is a huge gap between points there. I don't know if Titans of Olympus have given up on the 10th position. But in this rate, they're nev definitely not going to get it. I mean, they got to double their points at least in order to get within the top 10. But even more than that, they're just like, I don't know, they're more, they're like 2.2 million behind on Team France. That's a lot of points. That's like more than, I think that's even more than, th I don't know, there's, a, there's just a lot of points that they're buying. You guys can see it for yourself. Anyway, rank 14 we have Naughty Freddy, even worse, I mean, Naughty Freddy has less than half points of Titans of Olympus. So I'm thinking this is kind of the line where we can expect guilds to be within the top 10 or not. I mean, Team France is still within range, but Titans of Olympus is a little bit far away already, and I mean, Naughty Freddy is barely still ch uh, standing a chance. And if they actually start jamming heavenly, heavily, heav heavily? I don't even know. If they really start jamming very badly, <laughs> I'm trying to bypass the hard things to say, but if they're really going to jam a lot, uh, I mean, guilds within the top 10 are going to take note of that, and they're going to push even harder in order to, to make the top 10 even a more prestigious place to get on right now. Um, and following by Naughty Freddy, we have Kickbutt. Always a contender within the top 25, but unfortunately always like getting outside of the top 10, so I feel pretty bad for the members in Kickbutt along with Naughty Freddy and Titans of Olympus. But um, great war ongoing. But what's more interesting to me is to see how Danger is going to go up against the Death Knights. So that's going to be it for now because I really don't have anything to talk about more than what's already been talked about. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And if you guys like this video, make sure to BOOM!
give it a thumbs up. This was I Reversal bringing the first recap of War Damor. Tomorrow I'm going to be back with another recap of day two. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you guys want to see some more. And I'm going to meet you guys back here again tomorrow. So until then, I'll be signing off. And thank you as always for watching.